Welcome to the start of another RRC restoration. With the Subaru now complete, and the ATC back in one piece, I can turn my attention to this work of art. The bike is a Ducati 916 made in 1999, and as you can see, it has been very well looked after. So, without further delay, let's get all of the fairings off and get a good look at what restoration work lies ahead of us. Before I even remove the fairings, I know I'm going to have to give the bike a full respray, as you can see some damage here at the base of the tank, and it's the same story here at the other side. We also have some damage here at this fixing point on the fairing. And there is also this area on the seat unit that has some really strange markings on it. It's quite difficult to show on the camera how bad it is, but you get the idea. So, that's a full respray on the restoration list already.
With the removal of this last piece of trim, the bike is now naked, and I'm pleased to say there is no horror stories to be found on the bike. It really is a very well looked after example, and all it needs is a little refresh and it will be looking as good as new once more. So, let's crack on with pulling all the mechanical parts. So with this being an old Ducati, the odds were that it wouldn't be long until I uncovered an electrical fault. These two wires come from the alternator and go to the rectifier. The rectifier, as the name suggests, rectifies the power coming from the alternator, so basically it changes AC current into DC so that the battery can recharge and power all the electrics. So the problem here is a common one with these bikes, and that is the connections on these wires can't handle the current. Over time they fail, just like you see here. So, to fix this problem, when I rebuild the bike, I will upgrade these connections with ones that can handle more amps.
With all of the ancillary items now removed, I can think about dropping the engine from the frame. To do this, first I will have to suspend the frame at this point, as the engine and swing arm are held by the same bolt which runs from here all the way through to the other side. And if I remove it, without first supporting the frame, the whole frame will pivot in the middle and the whole process becomes very messy very quickly. So, let's crack on with supporting the frame and dropping the engine. It's now time to remove the front end, and in order to do that, I need to remove this special nut. But, I don't have the tool to remove it, so you know what that means. I'm only joking of course. What I'm going to do is take this piece of flat bar and make my own special tool. Like this drill? Follow the link in the top corner to see it restored. So with the holes drilled and countersunk, I now need to fit the pegs. For this I've just used a couple of M4 bolts that I've ground down. So what happens is these fit through here and because the holes are countersunk they sit in nice and flush. So once these are welded in I can grind it flush again and weld this nut on the top and that allows us to undo the nut and then re-torque it once we're finished. So let's get it welded up.
Well, it fits, so that's a good start. Look at that. Works a treat. So with the frame bare, that completes the teardown and this episode. I really hope you've enjoyed this first video and will hit that subscribe button and join me on my journey restoring this iconic bike to its former glory. Also, a massive thank you goes out to all my patrons for helping to make these videos possible.